Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with part two of the Kena Bridge of Spirits full playthrough walkthrough. In this section of the walkthrough, we are going to blitz through Taro's tree. We're not going to get a single thing in there. And then we're going to go to Rusu Mountain and complete all of that. Now we will do Taro's tree in the next part of the walkthrough. Taro's tree is really just a conduit or a road that leads to Rusu Mountain and Forgotten Forest. You cannot get everything in there until you have completed both Rusu Mountain and uh, Forgotten Forest. So I'm going to leave it until the end of this whole area. So we'll cover it in the next section of the walkthrough. For now, let's just get started with uh, Rusu Mountain. So first things first, got to talk to the children over here. Is Tara this way? They will tell us to speak with Zadro. And Zadro is in the cemetery over here. So this will trigger a cutscene, I believe. Do I pulse this? Yeah, okay. We skip this cutscene. Look after Benny. And then we will get Taro's mask. So you press left on the D-pad to wear spirit masks. Um, you can use spirit masks for a number of things. You can use them to spot. Can you use it here? Yes, you can. So here's like the really important thing to note with uh, with these masks is you can look on the ground and as long as you're wearing a mask, you can see the footprints of rot. This will lead you to any rot that you have not found. I will say there is one place in the game where I've seen rot footprints and it did not lead to rot. There was nothing under the rock that it was clearly pointing at. So I don't really know what the deal is there. That was the only one that happened like that. Um, the other thing that it does is outline any interactable object. There are some puzzles in the game that hide chests uh, behind movable objects, but the movable objects are like really hard to see. They kind of blend in with the environment. So just keep that in mind. All right, so with the mask, we can open this gate. So it does a little bit of cleansing. And then the gold orb is a memory. So we're going to chase that. And like I mentioned in the previous section of the walkthrough, we are ignoring everything in the village until the very end of this walkthrough series. Okay. So we got a little combat challenge here. So these guys have shields. And what you can do is you can either block, or you can either just let them sort of shield bash towards you. And then if you manage to kill them while their shield is still out, I guess maybe that's not possible on uh, Spirit Master difficulty, but on regular difficulties, you can kill them from behind, and then you'll get a trophy for doing so. All right. But to break the shields, you just use uh, R2. You'll break it. I should be cleansing here. Start the middle one. The combat challenges in this game, aside from the bosses, really aren't that hard. The enemy variety isn't super dense by any means. Oh god. Detaching the camera from enemies can be a little tough. Oh, I don't have enough courage. Damn. There we go, okay. Just trying to go after a healing flower. Alright, so this is a tier. And you can use the tier. You can use the tier, and this can be a little confusing, but the way let me back up back up the bus and explain this. So when the tier is available, you press square to make the rot form the forest tier or jump into it, I guess. And then you can guide it with the right stick. Kina is still, or Kina is still movable by the left stick. It's a strafe movement now, just like you were aiming. And then you can do both at the same time. So you want to move the forest here up here, and the forest here can cleanse 
uh, any corruption around. Nine times out of ten. Some corruption is not cleansable this way. Um, yeah, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Moving on. Over here, Kena. There is something. All right, so there is a a water droplet in this bucket here. So we just have the rot tip it over, and then you want to have the rot pick it up, and then plant it into the little flower bud there. All right. So there's a flower shrine over there. Again, I'm leaving everything in Taro's tree alone until we're good and ready to end it. So for now, we'll just go forward. So you can climb along these ledges, Uncharted style, and then get into Taro's tree proper. And we even create a warp point. All right, so we got some baddies over here. So you can use the rot to fight in the tier. I don't always really recommend doing that. Um, just because, yeah, it leaves Kana super, super vulnerable. Is there a healing flower? Yeah, let me get that. It leaves Kana very vulnerable. Oh, come on. That was cheap as hell. Uh, but yeah, it, it's an option. I think I'm going to have to eventually learn to block in this difficulty. Who else is there? Come on. I think some enemies got added on this difficulty. Okay. I respect it. I respect it. Try to isolate here. Whoa. Ugh. Yeah, see, that that's why fighting with the tier is just, like, not fun. Get a parry. I don't even know who I parried there. Oh, my God. We gotta, like... Yeah, this difficulty is quite serious. Yeah, I, I can't lie. This is taking a while. Wow. Okay, so it looks like on this difficulty, new enemies were added. So if you're following along on Master Spirit Guide, let's go, man. I, I respect the difficulty spike here. Okay, so I don't think the tier is necessary for me right now. No, it's not. Okay, we can just enter the forest. I'm pretty sure this will trigger a, a memory, though. Yeah. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're just going to follow the path. Come around here to this big blown up tree. Should be indicative that uh, something happened here. I do just like to wait for the memory just in case I run past it. So this gold orb is a memory. So we use the mask and then we can see the memory. What happened? What if Taro is here? But, he's but of course we skip that cutscene. Maybe just a Rusu can help us. Okay, so now it's time to go to Rusu Mountain. So. Just as a heads up, we did pass, we should have passed a warp point. Yeah. This is a warp point. Make sure you go back for that. This way you can easily teleport back to this place. OK. 
Okay. So now we're going to come over here. And again, we are leaving all those collectibles uncollected. That is deliberate. We are not going to explore this region. There is a bush down here, though, for some karma. Okay. So, yes, I now have 100 karma, so I'm going to purchase Rod Hammer. Like I've mentioned before, this ability is fantastic. It deals a lot of damage along with a lot of stagger damage. Um, so that's really, really important. All right, so this is Rusu Mountain. And our destination is all the way up there. So for now, let's go to the left, follow the path. Uh, this is primarily like a big platforming area. Um, you will see these uh, sort of like demonic monkeys swinging around. Okay. All right, and now that we are in Rusu Mountain, we are going to begin collecting things. So let me pull up my notes from my guide making. Rusu Mountain, okay. So we got a combat arena here. Let's get to work. You can start hitting these guys before they actually come alive, which is kind of nice. All right, so let's cleanse this. Oops. Oh, man, I don't know how I managed to break that shield. That was kind of nice. All right, let me let me showcase Rod Hammer here. Oh no, I don't have any. <laughs> I don't have enough rod points. Yeah. Alrighty. We got okay. We got another one of these guys. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you rod hammer on this guy. Whoops. Maybe not. Did that happen because I got hit? That's rod hammer. It does a really, really nice amount of damage. My shield is totally drained. <gasps> oh, man. Okay, down to critical here. Good parry. Oh, no. Wow, okay. I have to admit... I was not expecting this like level of difficulty on this difficulty level. I figured how much could they have possibly changed. Happy to see that I was, oh Jesus. Happy to see that I was mistaken in thinking that this actually is kind of difficult. All right, just trying to get my bearings here. Cool. I don't know why these guys just formed. Cool. All right. Come on, big boy. properly at all. There you go. So unfortunately, that rod hammer did not do all the damage it could have done. All right, we got through it. Okay, cool. Um, if you get somebody against a wall and then you rod hammer them, and as long as they don't get moved back or to the, as long as they don't get moved to the side, there's actually a second hit on Rod Hammer. It's sort of like a wave, and the wave will bounce off the wall and then come back into the enemy. So you can get some huge damage with that ability. Okay, so first things first, there is a rot under this rock here. Rot rock. 
And then there is a pedestal here that is missing an owl statue. So there's sort of like an owl emblem on it. This owl statue is very close by. This is sort of like a tutorial of this kind of puzzle. And we will solve this exact puzzle like several times throughout the game. While that's moving over there, I am going to just uh, lower my air conditioner because it's kind of hot right now. So I'll be right back. Okay, great. So, got some karma for that, which is nice. I am absolutely going to be prioritizing shield upgrades at this point, now that we have uh, Rod Hammer. One of Tara's memories. So we got another memory to follow. Man, I'm actually kind of impressed with this difficulty level. I'm really glad I decided to do the, the walkthrough on this difficulty. I feel like you actually get to showcase the combat a bit more. Alrighty. So let's view this memory. Of course, I'll skip the cutscene, though. Using this rot, we're going to clear this pathway here. And then there's a flower shrine back here. Flower shrines only give crystal currency, um, but it's still really, really helpful, especially if you're trying to purchase all the hats. I should look in the press kit and see what that currency is actually called. I don't think it's called crystals, but I don't remember it actually being mentioned in the, uh, in the game at all. All right, so let's come up here. These dirt patches, I'll just show this to you. These are slides. So you got to be really careful uh, because in this area, you cannot die from them, but in the next area, you can. So it's really important that you kind of constantly get your bearings. All right, coming around here. Do some more platforming. See what I mean? Like, tough. Okay. Okay. I should have double jumped there. I don't know what possessed me to not double jump. Cool. Whoa. Okay, there's some there's a bush over here for some karma. And you may think to yourself, like, oh man, like why is he going after these like little bushes? All the karma helps. The quicker you can upgrade your abilities, the better it is for you. Okay, so Looks this like is the path to Rusu's house. So we have a warp point now. Uh, and then there is also a... There is a rot down here. You do want to be very careful with ho how far you jump down cliffs in this game. A lot of times, it... The, the death zone is not relative to the terrain. It's relative to where you're jumping from. It's kind of funky. And oftentimes you'd be like, oh, let me just jump all the way down there and you know double jump at the end. This way I don't die or take damage. But you just wind up dying anyway. So kind of tricky. Anyway, there's that rot. We got this now. So this is the section I was talking about where if you mess up your platforming, you will die. So... You gotta be very, very careful. We're also coming up on our first spirit mail. And I, I just realized I need to modify my checklist, my Excel spreadsheet, because I should be tracking what I'm getting as we go. Right, so just jump across here. I realize I'm moving kind of quickly through this game. Um, than I normally do. That's not necessarily intentional. I just feel like this game kind of invites a speedrunning mentality once you finish it. Um, because there's... In reality, there's not a lot of combat in this game. Um, the combat encounters are finite. So, you know, you wind up, like, knowing where the combat encounters are and just preparing for those and then just sort of blasting to the next one. So, forgive me if I am going a little bit too fast for you. 
try to slow it down now that I'm realizing that. Okay, so right here we have a branching path. We can either go left, which is the quote-unquote correct way, or we can go this way. So let's go to the right. Critical path is what I was looking for. The left side is the critical path that leads to the objective. But for now, we're going to go over here. And we're going to pick up a spirit mail. So these are spirit mails. They are scattered throughout the world, like I've said. And I am just going to quickly modify my checklist here. Okay, we got that. Got that. On a ledge near the sliding cliff climbing. I may have to go... Okay, I actually have to go back. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, not yet. I will in a second, though. Um, I'm glad I consulted this checklist. Spirit mail. Yeah, okay, great. Cool. So we actually missed a rot uh, way back when. But I am not going to uh, walk all the way back just because this platforming section is kind of annoying. It's in the uh, the first sliding slope section that we passed, but we'll we'll get back there in a second. We're gonna be coming across a warp point. Right, let's just drop down here, drop down here, jump across. Careful on this one. This one's a little tricky. I do recommend when you're dropping, uh, hold forward on the joystick. This way, you actually sort of push yourself into the cliff. I'm not sure if that even makes a difference, but I like to do it. Okay, so this is a really easy rot to miss just because you're like, the camera's this way when you get up. But there is another path up here. So we're going to take this block and we're going to put it over here. And you actually can ride this if you like. Okay. Great. That one took me a while to find. Okay, cool. So, before we approach the bridge, there's one more thing we have to do here. And that is jump over here. So there is a cursed chest over here, which is the only cursed chest of Rusu Mountain. It's right there. Cursed chests glow red. There's also some karma in that pot. Oh, no, it's just crystals. And don't forget to pulse this lamp. Cool. So this is just a, a combat challenge. Uh, they change depending on the chest. But this is just to feed all enemies without getting hit. Uh, this doesn't mean that you cannot block, though. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Through God, all things are possible. So jot that down. <laughs> That's from It's Always Sunny. I don't know if I have uh, any any Sunny fans in the in the community, but that's one of my favorite lines. I'm not even a religious person, but somebody saying, "Well, through God, all things are possible," so jot that down. It's just so disrespectfully funny. Anyway, this is the bird's nest hat, and then yeah, cool. So that's the bird's nest hat. And we now have all the spirit mail and all the cursed chests of Rusu Mountain. Okay, and then we're gonna come over here. And then you can use your rot to pull the rope for the bridge. And then you'll be able to get across. One kind of weird thing about this is that you cannot do this to go back across. Um, this, this is a one-way ticket here. That said, there's a warp point here, so it's not that big of a deal. But it's, I don't know, it's just like a little weird. This pack is tiny. It looks like it could have belonged to one of the children. Okay, so we get another memory here. That corruption is powerful. There don't forget to activate the warp. I need to find another way around. Okay, so before we proceed any further. I'm going to go get that rot that I missed. So we're going to warp for the first time. Let's go to the ruins, warp. And then we're actually just going to turn around.
Okay. The other rot is over here. So what we need to do is we need to jump across. And then I'm just mashing X to get up here. And the other rot is right here. So sorry about that. Collect. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head towards a boss. Can I get over? Let's go this way. Now we're gonna head towards a boss. Kappa. Or as the Twitch chat likes to call it, Kappa. Kappa is a demon. Not sure if, I don't know. I know like a lot of weird words and so, Kappa means demon, or it's a kind of demon, I think, in Japanese. All right, so let's warp back up. This way we don't have to go through this whole uncharted... I call this the uncharted section, just because you're, like, climbing on cliffs and making big jumps. Okay, back at Rusu's house. You know what it is, too? I think it's because this is on PS5, the load times are non-existent, and it just feels so fast. Anyway, in this little area... Oh... Okay, so that was Kappa who just popped up. But he uh, he went away. I actually didn't notice that that happened. Yep. Hey, you shield guy. What's that? Oh, these guys throw rocks? That's pretty cool. I don't know. Oh, yeah, okay. So the guys that glow blue, they release a tear. Can we use the tear to automatically cleanse? Oh, my God, you can. Wow. Okay. I didn't know that. And that doesn't use your courage point. Cool. I had no idea you could do that. Anyway, usually when you cleanse the uh, the big flower, that will end combat. All right, so we got to pick up a rock here, and then we just got to kind of deliver it to the center of these rocks. Then we're going to do the same thing over here. Oh, never mind. That, that's later. Don't stop standing on this platform until the door opens. It's easy to want to just hit it and keep moving, but you can't. So we could light this cave up a little bit. I generally play my games very dark. Or at least as dark as they recommend it. Um, so a lot of times I get like some complaints like, Hey, I can't see. I can't see. And I'm confused because it's just like, How can you not see? Uh, but anyway. So that cave may seem a little dark to you. So this is the Kappa boss fight. It's really not that hard, um, although I'm playing on a new difficulty, so who knows. But the goal of this fight is to manage adds until you get a courage point or a rot ability point, and then sick the rot onto Kappa, and then just deal a bunch of damage to him. He's going to be teleporting around the room. You see a red zone there, a red zone there, and then there's actually one that you can't see up on the, I didn't mean to move, up on the platform on the left there. So it's really just about managing the adds until you are able to deal damage to him. Wow, that was insane. Let's see how this goes. Not that I don't have faith, but it's clearly off to a rocky start. So instead of chasing him and, like, waiting for him to, like, and trying to chip away at him. All right, here we go. So now that that's happened, now we can just wail on him. You can get a few good hits on him. But, yeah, you got to watch out for that. I've mentioned that several times that whenever you bind somebody, uh, they will start to attack you. 
as they're coming out of the binding. Oh. Oh man, I got greedy there. That was pure greed. I'm sorry for that. That was just greed. I was going in for a third combo. I shouldn't have. I should have just left. I'm pretty sure you could parry that hit and just keep him going, but that nah, was really stupid. I wasn't expecting the giant explosion at the beginning. That sort of set me back a ways. So we'll get him this time. You, you see how the fight works. You just build uh, courage and then send the rod after him. In the later phases of the fight, he will send out more adds, so, and tougher ones too. Oh, hello. So I'm actually gonna leave that one alive. Just so I can do this. What is wrong with me? I left the, the little guy alive. This way I could get the more courage off of him to try to be more efficient, but I shouldn't have, he messed up my timing. He, Kappa will typically always appear. Um, he will typically always appear furthest from you. So just keep that in mind. He, he won't really ever appear next to you. Okay, I mean, that guy was just up there, so that's fine, I guess. Just give me one second. All right, let's do a very patient clear here. I gotta stop fighting in this corner. He literally threw a guy in a place that I couldn't reach. Oh my god. It keeps happening mid mid hit I can't even start to block I should just do two combos and stop like I said this is different on on a harder difficulty like things are so much more punishing than I'm used to So what he might do now is he may go up top. Oh no, okay. We may actually be able to get a decent three rounder here. The reason I'm okay with this taking a little bit longer is just it's safer. Because now we're gonna be able to drop him well below 50% HP on the next uh, bind that we do to him. Cool. 
So now he's going to go up top, and he's going to start lobbing guys at us from up there. Yeah, he's going to quickly teleport up. So, for now, it's just going to be explosives, and then ads will come out. So you kind of just want to do your best here to avoid as much as you can. Probably be another round of explosives, yep. Okay, so now ads are going to come out. But like I said, these are going to be bigger ads, so you do have to be careful. Yikes, I got to heal. That's mandatory, I have to heal. Yeah, give me one more. Ah, no, where are you going? God damn, <laughs> I wanted him so bad. <laughs> ah, I messed that up. That's okay. You can survive another round of this. Was he going upstairs again? Wow, these fights last so long on this difficulty. This is nuts. So it seems like if you just run in a parallel line here, you shouldn't take any hits. Explosion. I'm just going to go after him. And this. There we go. There's Kappa. Wow, that was a good fight on this really hard difficulty. I'm glad that that proved to be a challenge. I'll know to take these fights a bit more seriously next time. So now we can cleanse this big flower. And then this will give us access to the elevator to the top of the mountain. So we have a bit of a respite before any new combat, so feel free to relax. Right now, what we're going to do is we're just going to get some rot, get some hats, and learn how to use a bow. Come on, this way. Can you pick that up? Don't forget to pick that up for some karma. For some karma. Do I have... I only have 25. 35 now. Hey, big spender. All right, so now we're going to meet Mr. Rusu, who is like the resident woodsman slash archer. And he gives us the bow. So with the bow, he wants to go through this little shooting gallery. And there are a total of five shooting galleries oops, on the mountain. And so the goal is always to just shoot the targets before time runs out. So we're going to do a whole bunch of that now. Don't forget to activate the warp point. First one we're going to do is this one. Here in the big autumn tree. Big oak tree, I guess. Alright, so we got to pull the lever in the distance there with the rot. And then the targets drop. One, two, three, four. There you go. There's a flower shrine there, so let's go cleanse it. There is a crystal on this tree. That drops a tear. Yeah, you know what's funny is, since Returnal, I haven't done a fast game. I just did two Dark Souls games since Returnal came out, so... I think that's why I'm just so like, oh my god, a fast game, a fast game. So exciting. Anyhow, go ahead and cleanse this. Okay. 
This one is a moving target. So we have to run along the path. And shoot. So luckily, we have a, like a bullet time mechanic where if you jump and then knock an arrow, you can slow down time. And this also slows down the timers in your challenges as well. So this should absolutely get taken advantage of whenever possible. It's also incredible for taking down aerial enemies uh, in big combat challenges. It just gives you so much extra time to do what you need to do. Okay, so this one's pretty easy. Uh, it's kind of hard to understand how to start. Rusu will say just hit the the, uh, the wooden pea hat or whatever to start. And so you think, oh, let me shoot the one right in front of me. It's actually this one. Okay. And then the fifth and final one is definitely the hardest. Um... Yeah, there is also a rot in this pot here. So let's grab that. Oh, we have to shoot it. Okay. These are little fruit that you can shoot down for your rot to eat. And again, karma is really, really important. So I recommend just always knocking these down whenever you see them. There's not too, too many of them but they are very helpful. There's a hat cart here. When we discover it, we will get a new hat. This one is the Whirly Bird. Okay, so same thing as last time. We have to pull the lever, but this one has three difficulty levels. So you gotta be quick. One, two, three, four. You actually have like plenty of time to do these, um, but just make sure that before you start a challenge, you restock back to four arrows. You don't want to start a challenge with only one arrow in the quiver. You always want to try to shoot them in the order that they come up. Yeah, see, you, you really have plenty of time. So don't panic when you're not, when you don't have any more arrows. That said, what you can also do is delay the final hit on a set of whirly birds. This way you restock arrows as you're waiting to get that last hit. Let's try to demonstrate that here. Yeah, see how I'm sort of delaying a little bit? Buying myself a little bit of time. Wow, I didn't see that one. Okay, so after you complete all five, you'll get Rusu's mask. So that's how you get that hidden mask there. Now that we have have a mask cart, we can go ahead and buy some masks. So Rusu's is a buy once that costs 500. There's a few of those, um, so kind of a bummer, but it's okay. All right, let me consult my checklist here. In a hanging pot on the island. Hats, visit the hat cart, complete all five shooting galleries. Right, okay, then the rest are at Rusu's house. All right, so now what we can do, optionally, if you like, you can now basically get all but one hat in Taro's tree. So if you want to go back and start exploring there, you are more than welcome. Um, just give me one second. Sorry about that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Filming this. Uh, sorry. Okay. 
cool. So now we can slide down here, and this will be a combat challenge that we have to incorporate our bow in order to overcome. So what I recommend doing is just sort of chilling for a second. Oh, never mind. Looks like we can't do that. I was going to say go after the monkeys first, but it doesn't look like you can do that. No, nope, they're, they're here. Ooh, okay. These monkeys are strong now. So they will throw sticks at you. Hey, how you doing? That's funny. It doesn't spawn... Yeah, it's not spawning, like, additional enemies. Anyway, it, generally, if you hit things in the face, uh, they will die quicker. <laughs> See why bullet time is really, really helpful? You can also cleanse arrows, or cleanse flowers using the bow. And you want to shoot this, and then that sort of uh, drops. Just... Cool. All right, and then there is a warp point right here. Sure, turn that on. And then we're going to get the first ever meditation spot over here. And there's a bit of a hidden mechanic with the bow, and that is you can shoot these blue flowers, and then you do what's called a whip over to them. So here's a meditation spot. Using these increases your health, and there's a total of 12 of them. Cool, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and whip back. Oh, also one thing I don't think I mentioned when we got the bow is that when you knock an arrow, the longer you hold it, and once it like fully powers up, it'll go basically straight. But if you just quickly shoot an arrow, it'll have a slower arc. So just keep that in mind. All right, what's gonna happen now is we are going to fight a boss. So we're gonna slide down this mountain and I'm going to attempt to get to a chest. This chest just has currency in it. It's not really worth it, but yeah, when we go all the way down to the bottom, we will be at Rusu's house and then we'll have to do a small combat challenge with some monkeys that we have to shoot. And then we will fight Wood Knight. Wood Knight is a pretty hard boss. Um, he has a lot of courage points stocked around him um, and what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to shoot them off of him to build our courage to help us out. Uh, the one move you absolutely have to look out for with him is his boomerang. If you get too far away from him, he will throw his boomerang. And it's... You just got to block it. Okay, let's do it. All right, so there's a flower over here. Perfect. And then there's a chest up here. Alrighty. So this is where you really got to abuse your double jump slow-mo. Just like that. I didn't think he was going to be hittable there. That's one. Got to see where he pops up again. Behind us, I think. Yep. Ugh. Come back. Okay. Of course, we get some more, though. Do 
really got to take advantage of that 3D audio on your PlayStation. This way you can always oh shit. This way you can always tell where they are. Really got just got to listen out for them. I'm actually going to pause right after we kill these things. Okay. Just give me one quick second. Sorry about that. Full disclosure, I record these while working sometimes, and I'm working tonight, so. Yeah. Give me one second. Okay, cool. So, now we're gonna fight Wood Knight. He's tough, but you can see these orange crystals all around him. These are courage points. But, he is parryable. See the double damage from that? It's because he got sort of messed up there. Trying to shoot it off. Nope. Okay, that just destroyed my shield, so now I gotta be a little careful. Is this the boomerang? That's like the worst move. Cool, there we go. There's there's a courage point. Pulse it to pick it up. Oh, that was such a late parry. Oh my god, that was so sick. Alright, so now he's guarding against arrows. Oh, hey, buddy. I did not see that coming. Wood Knight first try. Really hard boss. You just gotta like his attacks are delayed, so it's like it's meant to like induce panic. When a when an enemy delays their attacks, they're trying to force you to panic and just spam your block or spam your parry. You just gotta wait. Wait until it's actually about to hit you. Generally my tip is watch their hands before you do anything. Again, just one second. That knife for Taro and meet him out these woods, consumed by the troubles of all. I hope we can bring him peace. More relics are hidden in the corruption. I'll wait for you there. Okie doke. Cool. So, now we can sort of relax a bit. Uh, we are done with all... Well, not all the combat. Actually, yeah, I think we are done with all the combat of Rusu Mountain. Uh, we get three rot for defeating Wood Knight. And now we have eight of 13. So, it's time to go... Go picking stuff up. I guess the first one we should do is in the house. It's quite a bit of stuff. There's a rot right over here in this drawer. Go ahead and eat that. I think there's a chest in here too. Yes, there is. Okay, let's activate the warp. But then we're gonna backtrack a second. Okay, 
So let's go back through the house. And then there's like a big owl sanctuary back here that I want to want to go through. Okay. So there is a rot bouncing around here. Yep, right here. Uh, what's funny is you can actually shoot this guy with an arrow. And that will stop him. Or you can pulse him. When I got here the first time, I forgot about pulsing moving objects. Even though this is literally the same exact setup as the beginning of the game. It's running around with a leaf. I just forgot. So I shot him. Uh, but that gets you the flower hat as well. And then what we can do is we can shoot the crystal in the center of the owl. That creates a tear. And then... Yeah, let's clear out the rot. So level two rot changes the uh, the tier into something. It starts to resemble a deer. And when you reach rot level five, it is ginormous. All right, so there is a flower shrine right here. Go ahead and claim that. And then there's a puzzle right here for us to solve. So use the rod to pull out the, the cog, and then shoot this to turn it, and then this becomes a usable platform. Okay, then we're going to come over here, and then we're going to shoot this to activate the lift. And then we have a little bit of a platforming whip puzzle here. You can chain these together, which is just so cool looking. We're going to open this up, get the feather, Go get, it. get some karma, and then we can just, you can either go back across like this, or you can just slide down and go back near where the fire, uh, the, the flower shrine was. Okie doke. So there is a chest over here that we can grab. There might be a barrel. No, it's a chest. These unmarked chests always contain currency. It's always crystals. Okay. Now let's do things in the front of the house. If you're wondering, like, hey, where are we? This is the other side of that broken bridge, and that's where we went to fight Karma. Or Kappa, so pretty cool. All right, so there's an owl emblem here, so let's go find that. It's actually just over here. With these, oops, with these longer journeys with lifted objects, um, the rod will always attempt to walk in a straight line, and that's to their detriment. They will just walk into walls in perpetuity until you sort of guide them more deliberately. All right, get some karma for that. This is a fun little thing. So we shoot this to throw a water droplet down. We use the rod to pick it up, and then we create a tier right here. Okay, and now we get to water the garden. You'll know that you are done watering a garden when everything glows gold, just like that. And there's a rot inside this squash, so go ahead and pulse it. And then when you do, you'll get the squash hat. Pretty cute. Um, there is another over here. I don't think you get anything for this, though. You might get some karma, but there's no rots or hats over here. Yeah, you get some karma. Cool, so now we're just missing two rot. Just consult my checklist here. The island. Cliffs. Okay, I know we're there. Okay, so now that we have the bow, we can go get uh, the last two. We, a we accidentally skipped one, but I don't mind because it's just really slow to get. So what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way back down to the gorge. This is the start of Rusu Mountain. 
And then we can now whip over to this island here. And then there's a rot tucked in this pillar. And then we're just going to swim all the way out to the corner. You can see that lamp over there. That is our destination. How long did this take? It took an hour. Okay, I'm glad I decided to do this um, instead of combining it with Forgotten Forest. If we can keep these around an hour, that would be that'd be best, I think. Not bad for like a 100% walkthrough. I'm a little concerned about the fields, if I'm being honest. The fields is a really long area. So, we'll see how it goes. All right. So now we have 21 rot, and Rusu Mountain is complete. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to swim back over to the warp point. So I always get hiccups doing these things. Oh, um, slowing, uh, swimming in this game is very slow. Very slow. Okay. So, now that we have the bow, we can knock these down, too. Let's go ahead and do that real fast. Okay. So, we have 345 rot, or er, courage. Karma, sorry, jeez, so many currencies. Um, okay, this costs 300 to start with one. I'm going to say yes to this. I'm going to, I'm going to choose this. Uh, Rotten Fused Arrow, this is really powerful as well, uh, but not going to worry about that just yet. I think at this point I'm going to start upgrading the shield. Um, but yeah, so that'll be it for now. Uh, we have fully completed Rusu Mountain. Our next destination is the Forgotten Forest. Uh, the Forgotten Forest is pretty interesting. It's... It's kind of big, honestly. Uh, there's a lot to do there. A lot of puzzles to solve. Not a ton of combat. It's much more of a puzzly area. Um, but there is one combat challenge there that is very difficult up on the uh, the God Tree Shrine. So hopefully that goes well. But we will end this walkthrough here. Uh, part two, we will do Forgotten Forest. And then we will do uh, Taro's Tree. And then fight the story boss of this area. So that's next time. Uh, but... As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Kana, Bridge of Spirits, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord server. The link for that is in the description below. I'll switch on Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.